Hey guys, my Jeffries here, and welcome back to FMTB. Now, in the last episode, um, we beat Wheelston 2-1, and I said about how important these next two matches will be. As it turns out, we actually qualified for the playoff places from that game. Therefore, I will still be showing this game, which is a home match against Hemel Hempstead, but the next game, the final game of the season, I won't be showing on camera due to the fact that uh, we still have at least two more matches after that anyway. So this is the last domestic match of the season. And I am very much looking forward to seeing how we get on uh, in terms of performances and results and things like that. Um, do you know what? I might just ask my assistant to choose a rotated squad. At least then, we don't run the risk of injuries too much. Um, there is still a chance that some of our players might pick up a knock, but it won't be as bad as if, say, Cadmore got injured, or Abdullah got injured, or Torres, or Yemi, or Robinson, Deering, any of those players. So this is the lineup he's chosen. Um, there is a couple of changes that I would like to make. I think. Actually, maybe not. No, maybe not. I was going to try and take Kissick out of the starting lineup, but we haven't really got anybody else who can play in that role. Uh, because the only other player we've got is Farhad, but we don't have anyone else who can play the centre midfield role. So I think this is probably the best we're going to get. So let's stop wasting time and uh, let's actually get into the game. Now, Hemel Hempstead seems to have a kit very similar to Forest Green's. And that worries me, because Forest Green are one of my bogey teams on this game. I very, very rarely beat them. Um, I normally draw or lose, and it's always by a fluky goal. I think I mentioned this in my last... Uh, sorry, Football Manager 2014. I think I mentioned that in You Don't Win Anything With Kids. Um, that they're, They are my bogey team. And I think that was actually one of the rare times that I managed to beat them. And, you know, that's a good feeling when you beat your bogey team feels like the weight's been lifted off your shoulders, and then the second time you play them, they crush you. They might have even been one of the teams we were competing for the league against. I can't remember entirely off the top of my head right now. Um, but anyway, we're not playing them, we're playing Hemel Hempstead. And here comes Farhad on the ball, into Kissick, who I'm going to be wrapping up in cotton wool for most of this game. As it happens, that really should be Farhad's goal. Um... If it wasn't for the fact that it came off the keeper, it of course would be his goal. But I mean, that's such a good strike. For someone so young to hit a ball that true. And it's just unfortunate he hit the crossbar and then it came back and hit the keeper. Because that could have easily, if that had been two inches lower, that would have hit the bottom of the crossbar and crossed the line. Um, so it is a little harsh that he loses a perfectly good goal for something as small as that. But, you know, those are the rules, unfortunately. That's a good assist, though, if it counts. Does it count? Yes, it counts. Kissick's 12th goal of the season. We are thumping in the goals this year. We have, I think, five players who've scored more than 10 goals this season, which, you know, that, that's 50 goals there, at least. So that's, that's a very, very, very good return. We've got the highest goal difference in the league. Not even Ebbsfleet have got a better goal difference than us. Ours is two, two better off than theirs which is funny enough the the number of goals we're winning by at the moment so if it wasn't for that we'd be on the same as them um, and you know Farhad he's a player that I'd like to bring in next season permanently so's in guessing so's Irvine although I've tried offering a deal to Irvine and so far he thinks that we're below his ambitions <clears throat> so I might have to wait till the end of the season when we, if we get promoted and try and bring him in then once he's a free agent, he becomes a little easier to negotiate with. Right now, he still has a contract with West Brom, so there's a bit of brashness going on. You know, he thinks he's uh, invincible kind of thing. You have to wait for him to be a free transfer, then he actually starts listening to you. Simeon Akinola scores his third goal of the season. Apparently, it was Connolly's fault. Was it Connolly's fault? Did he fail to cut out the pass or something? Let me have a look at this replay. His name was highlighted. Maybe he lost the ball. That was a very easy counter-attack. And uh, not a great deal Atkins could have done there. He did try and dive. But you know, when, it, when a striker gets that close one-on-one, -on -one, it is very, very difficult to uh, to stop them. 
unless you either bring them down or get lucky. That tends to be the two options. We are still winning though. 2 1 at half time. That's not bad. You know, I would prefer the clean sheet, but to still be winning, it puts us in a good position for the playoffs now. Most of our first team are being rested, but it's a confidence booster to our reserves because now they know that they could step up to the plate if necessary. So if one of our key players gets injured between now and our first playoff game, um, there's still a very good chance that one of our reserves will step up full of confidence and do the job just as well, if not better. So, uh, you know, it's it's that's the key to good man management, is being able to juggle your team like that, being able to rotate your squad, keep everybody happy, which I'm not normally the best at doing. It's only towards the end of the season here when there's not really much to play for. That's when I start experimenting with tactics and I start looking towards the next season. Because um, even if we don't get promoted, we've got a few of these players tied down now for the next season. So um, it's good to start experimenting and see how we can we can work our way around it and create a better team for next season so we can really push on again and try and get promoted. I'm going to rest Kissick. He's uh, scored one goal today. He's, he's assisted another. So I'd say he's had a good shift. I'm also going to bring Mills on for Connolly because he's not played his best. Um, and I'm going to arrest Kajabi and bring on Hills because I don't think Hills is going to get much of a chance with us anymore. I'd like to keep him on for next season but as a backup choice, not necessarily as a first choice. That's poor from Spiller. Giving away the penalty there. That's not good for the confidence. Spiller's been one of our standout players this season, and it's only been in the last three or four matches that he's really started to, to slip. His performances have dropped, and that is a concern. It's always a concern when you, one of your best players starts playing badly. Um, Yemi hasn't scored for us in a little while as well, which is also a concern. I'm not 100% sure why that is. Like I said uh, in the last episode, it could just be that he's out of form. Um, or it could be something else that's not quite there. All I know is right now we are back at 2 all. Akinola's got his second of the game. Only his fourth goal of the season as well, so he's basically doubled his, his season tally in this match. We've been his lucky omen, it seems. Uh, so we need to really step things up over this last 20-minute period. Try and, and get something going, try and get the ball in the back of the net. At least get the ball into the box and try and make something happen. Now we've brought on Irvine and I don't think he's even seen the ball yet. He's only got a rating of 6.6. .6. Um, moving in guessing inside. You know, he scored on his debut for us playing inside. So I, I assumed that he would do okay this time round. But it looks like he's struggled as well. Not one of our best second half performances this one. Which is a bit of a shame. That is a bit of a shame. We've got a little bit of time left. Spiller puts the ball in the box straight to the defender, Hankin. Spiller again, and the referee's blown for time. So we don't even get the chance to put the ball back in the box, which is a little bit annoying. But time was up, so can't really complain too much. Um, I agree with my assistant. They should have been winning that game. They should really be motivated by that team talk as well, because we could tear strips off them right now and tell them exactly how and why they should have won. I think we've kept pretty calm, considering. You know, we were 2-0 up and we blew the lead. That's always frustrating. Even if you're playing against a team that you know is better than you, it's still frustrating when you throw away a lead like that. So, uh, I think they got off lightly there. Anyway, so the next match, the away game, last game of the season, we will be skipping... <clears throat> so the next time we'll be back will be for the first match of the playoffs. And depending on the result of the final match of the season, obviously we we don't know who our opposition is for the playoffs yet. But I'll be preparing the squad, I'll be fiddling around with some of the tactics and some of the training. If I do make any massive changes, I will talk you through those. Um, after all, this is a tutorial-style series. But uh, unless... Unless I make any changes, we'll just head straight into the next match and try and win it and get promoted. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, I will see you soon.